Uh, now we are in the uh, uh, energy transport section in the BSL in chapter 9, the first chapter of the energy transport section. The chapter is gonna gonna be similar. Uh, we call this analogy. The first chapter for the definition of the viscosity and the the mechanism of the energy transport molecular or uh, convective transport. So it's gonna be similar. This is first is going to be give the definition of the conductivity. As we know, the the materials such as metals they they conduct the heat uh, readily. So the other such wood they they don't, but they are thermal insulators. The physical property that describes the rate of the which heat is conducted is the thermal conductivity uh, represented by the K. Heat conducting the fluids can be uh, uh, through the molecular energy transport. Uh, this is the energy uh, inside of the uh, inside of the uh, let's say uh, inside of the system control system control volume. The energy transport is happens by the molecular uh, motion. We call this the molecular energy transport. Here, the first type of energy transport. In the second type of the energy transport, we can say energy can also be transported by the bulk motion of the fluids. All bulk motion of the fluids is in the energy, not the molecular. We call this the convective energy transport. This transport depends on the fluid density of the fluid. Another mechanism for the energy transport is the diffusive energy transport because of the in the mixture that are interdiffusing. So in addition, the energy can also be uh, transmitted by the radiative energy transport. In this chapter, it's going to cover the two types of energy transport, the conduction and the convection, convective energy uh, uh, transport. In, in, in the later chapters in this book, chapter 16, and the diffusive heat transport in chapter 19 and 24 is going to cover these two types of energy transport. Now we start our discussion here. Similar to in the first chapter, uh, Newton's law of viscosity. If you remember the discussion from the first chapter, here we have furious uh, law of heat conduction. Is the, we call this molecular energy transport. And similarly, in the first chapter, in the first chapter we had like a. Uh, let me show in the the figure below. The first chapter we had like two plates between two plates. Uh, the length between uh, two plates is y. We have some the fluid uh, in the time is less than zero was the set of the. Uh, just stationary, not moving. When the time is equal to zero, did some F force was acting on the, the lower plate by the constant velocity with zero. Then later time we obtain some velocity distribution. But this time we have a similar uh, discussion. Again, two plate between two plate we have some uh, matters that like solid. Let's say if this solid initially when the time is less than zero. The, the the temperature was T zero in everywhere in, in the inside of the solid. But when it T is equal to zero in the lower uh, section plate, we try to give some heat uh, and uh, hit uh, the solid. We, try, we start to heat that and we obtain the, the temperature of T one. The time is uh, zero. Later, when small t, we see some temperature distribution like this, this function of y and t, and large uh, t, we see temperature distribution t0 to t1. t1. We call this development of the steady state temperature profile for the solid slab between two parallel plates. It's analogy for the chapter one. So this actual to maintain the temperature at the lower plate as T1, we should provide some uh, heat, we call this Q, over A is the area of the, the provide, because, you know, 
uh, in in here the the plate here is this plate is horizontal the upper plate is horizontal like this so we just have obtained t1 temperature in so we need to provide some q heats by area so this this term is is coming from here so we have here you see q over a uh, and temperature difference between the lower plate and upper plate and divide by y and k is here similar manner in the chapter one just like in the in chapter one we were using the mu viscosity viscosity now in in this chapter we just define the k is conductivity is similar the uh, the viscosity we call this k is the thermal conductivity of the slab so we can write this um, we can write this uh, uh, this equation by this form so the, the local rate of heat flow uh, per unit area heat flux in the positive y direction is designed by the if you define the qy in this notation we can write that one is in this in this form similar to the calculation of the viscosity this equation is reserved to find the case the one dimensional form of the various laws of heat conduction so the state heat flux by the conduction is proportional to temperature difference uh, temperature gradients between two so if the temperature varies in the three direction uh, not just one direction for the each direction for for the each uh, direction in the three space let's say we have three space uh, y x z for three direction we can write uh, all the heat flux by for by, for the x direction that one sorry uh, For the x direction, we can use that expression for y, that one for the z. You see, the k is the same because this is the just the material uh, uh, features called as a heat conductivity. It doesn't change when the, in the based on direction. So, in the vector notation, we can write this this three uh, fluxes by this formula the q is has some here three elements qx qy and qz define as here so we call this three-dimensional form of your loves for heat conduction this equation describes the molecular transport of heat in uh, isotropic media the isotropic mean here the material has no preferred direction so that heat is conducted with the same thermal conductivity k in all direction so, but some uh, solids such as single non-cubic crystals, uh, fibrous crystals, and laminates are anisotropic. Or for such systems, we need to use this this equation in here. The, these terms is represent as a symmetric second-order uh, tensor called thermal conductivity tensor. So, that the heat flux does not uh, point the same direction as the temperature gradient. So for non-isotropic solution, isotropic uh, material. In addition, the thermal conductivity K, defined in this here, quantity known as a thermal diffusivity. Alpha can be defined K or rho and Cp. In here, the Cp or that heat capacitor constant pressure, as this, this represent or the symbol indicates the quantity per unit mass, this unit mass heat. Occasionally, we can use that term also. This also represents the heat capacity per mass. So the ratio between uh, the kinematic viscosity we obtained in the chapter first and the, in here the thermal diffusivity, the ratio between these two indicates the relative ease of the momentum and energy transfer in the flow system and that its given dimensions ratio is a kinematic viscosity over uh, thermal diffusivity. As given this result, we have mu cp mu over k we call this dimensional number is prandtl number 
another dimensional group we can uh, can use the packlet number as the multiply by Reynolds and the Prandtl number, and we are going to use this later in this book. Actually, the, the defined thermal conductivity term is can be vary uh, from the 0.01 watt per meter uh, Kelvin for gases to about 1000 uh, watt per meter Kelvin for pure metals. It's change depends on the material and 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 vary. So the summary of the table give the 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 quantities. Q is the watts per meter square. In a cyber SI system and in other system we can see this 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 t is the kelvin here in si y is the meter k is the conductivity watts per meter uh, kelvin cp is in thermal diffusivity as has the same same uh, units as a uh, kinematic viscosity and viscosity and a uh, random normal is dimensional number. So, in the later on this chapter, you see some thermal conductivities or some uh, some substances like gases and thermal conductivity of some other uh, liquids. You see here and um, some examples is give. Okay. So this chapter is you see uh, if you remember the first chapter. Is, is is very similar the the, the analogy is uh, we define just molecular transport by a viscosity viscous forces and um, we we found some relationship we call this newton's laws of viscosity we generalize newton's laws of viscosity in here we found and uh, the thermal conductivity k and how can we find the thermal conductivity how we define the, the three dimensional uh, three um, uh, coordinates uh, Conductivity calculation in the free use laws and so on. In in here also is gives this chapter a sub uh, as a subsection in the theory of the thermal conductivity of gases for low density. Some formulation of can we estimate the thermal conductivity of the uh, low density gases. In in later you see in later sections okay the discussion here the estimation of the thermal conductivity. In section 9.4, give the term uh, theory of the thermal conductivity of the liquids and estimation how can we estimate the uh, liquids thermal conductivity. And uh, section 9.5 is the, the term thermal conductivity of the solids here. And section uh, uh, 9.6 discuss about the effective thermal conductivity of the composite solids. It's give the like a uh, formulation how can we calculate the effective conductivity of the composite solids so on so we can you can find all this uh, relation here you can go and read deeply I'm not not uh, just gonna uh, touch deeply so I just I'll go move uh, section um, 9.7 is talking about the convective transport of energy if you remember in the uh, first chapter we were talking about the uh, energy transport uh, momentum transport is first happening in the molecular then second is the the convective convective this is the uh, because of the molecular level because this is because of the bulk movement in in the similar case in 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 this chapter we define the heat transfer by first for molecular by we define the conductivity term in the second part of this chapter we are gonna it's gonna be same as in chapter first we are just gonna touch the convective transport of the energy later we are gonna just combine to find to combine energy transport molecular plus convective terms combined terms we are going to use that in later so so we know the energy also like the motion uh, can be uh, transported by the bulk motion of the fluids uh, uh, we know from the uh, any control surface we defined before like control system control body inside of this control body we can write some differential volume and this 
called the differential surface. There is some we call this n is normal. This this normal vector, this normal vector, the perpendicular surface. Then we have some any arbitrary vector is is defined the flux of the mass, or flux of momentum, or flux of uh, either uh, energy in here. Yes, we have in here some flux of has some velocity of v in here on the control surface. So in here uh, for for any system we have three control surfaces in the first is the uh, in the x direction and perpendicular the x direction perpendicular the x direction second one is the in the y direction and the third one is going to be the, in the z direction you see from here so we can uh, for example uh, Three uh, perpendicular surface element of ds across to which energy is being transported by convective by the fluid moving with the velocity of v. You know the fluid has some velocity of v, v like this, but this fluid velocity, as I showed before, has some uh, three elements: vx, vi, and vz. That's why we should have um, three three elements for this. Uh, transport so the volume rate of the flow across the, the phase perpendicular the x-axis here is going to be described vx multiplied by ds and the rate of flow energy across the ds in then is can be given by this formula uh, this is a uh, flow rate and this is the, the energy term this energy term is the first one is the represent the, the kinetic energy of the uh, fluid and second term is represent the internal energy of the fluid then the multiplication of this uh, uh, kinetic energy plus uh, internal energy by the fluid uh, flux vx over ds give the energy flow of energy across the control safe surface ds so similar expression can be write by by v y and v z as as below we can write we can write in here in here before writing the similar expression in here the kinetic energy is is the per unit value volume is the function of the v x v y and v z v z if we write a similar expression for the all direction we obtain this final result and we can write this in terms of the the vector in terms of the vector we define here the velocity of the fluid and this is the final result is going to give the uh, convective heat flux term for for convective heat flux term term for the, the fluid for in the body system for the ds control surface is a normal and the, the vector velocity and that's why this show the convective energy flux uh, term because of the fluid has the some velocity of the v so it's understood that this is the flux from the negative side of the uh, surface the positive size okay in the other uh, other things this this represent this first represent the convective heat, heat flux but another term we can say work associated with the molecular motion first we recall that that when a force fx on the body and cause it to move through the distance dr so let's say we defined before uh, before we define For any any body, if we apply some force F from center here, x1, which we can just move this body to some another point, let's say x2. That's why uh, we call this distance, distance here, distance dr, and we can define the work done on the body, dw's f 
uh, dot product uh, dot product between the f and the dr. So then the rate of the, the doing the work is the w over dt is going to be f dot product dr over dt. Then we obtain that results as give us the work 